Okay, now we start the, the last part of the last lecture in the radar course. We're continuing on with the ECM techniques. We've already looked at masking techniques, and now we'll look at deception and destruction. Now, deception can be broken down into whether it's active or passive, and there are these different passive techniques and these different active techniques that we'll take a look at. One passive technique is just making the cross-section of the target very small. It's much harder to jam it if its cross-section is small. And so that will uh, contribute to the effectiveness of deception jamming by making the target less harder to see, whether it was barrage or deception or any other kind. Chaff puffs can be used to create decoy targets in some situations. Uh, Anti-ship missile seekers generally have non-coherent processing, and those targets have insufficient Doppler shift to distinguish chaff and sea clutter. And so chaff puffs can be used to have targets away from the ship that are large, and so that the anti-ship missile can would go towards the, the chaff puffs. And then also decoys, which could be launched, that have a real radar cross-section, and they can be shaped to have very large radar cross-sections and have the motion match those of the real targets and they can be effective on all classes of radars. Uh, then there are active deception techniques where what we do is we the, you can have what's known as a repeater jammer and that repeater jammer generates false echoes by delaying the received signals and then sends, sends them back at a later time. And delaying the signals causes them to appear at different ranges and, and azimuths. And there are different types of re repeater jammers. Uh, you can have a transponder repeater, which stores the replica of the radar signal uh, after it's, uh, it's triggered by the radar, of course, and after it hits the, the jammer, and can send back signals any time you want to set the, the repeated jammer to do it. And range gate stealing can be done with a repeater jammer, and its function is to cause the tracking radar to break track, the so-called break lock on the target. And in dealing with pulses that are slowly changing from the, what you do is you slowly change the delay of the echo pulses and causing the radar to track the repeater and not the actual target. And you can do the same with velocity gate stealing, where we uh, falsify the target speed or pretend that it's stationary, all to divert the radar from, th from knowing wh which of the different signals it's receiving uh, is the actual target that you want to be tracking. And repeated jammers can be quite effective on an unprepared radar system but they're relatively easy to counter. Once you know that someone is using uh, a certain technique, you, uh, a whole arrays of special purpose jammers are, are required that have detailed knowledge of the radar. If you really know the radar signal processor, then you can develop special purpose jammers that will d deal and subvert how the signal is processed in the signal processor. And the details of that are because are beyond the scope of this lecture, because you'd want to give examples, and it, it's just beyond the level of an open lecture. Destructive ECM techniques against radar are really two. Anti-radiation missiles, which are decoys, which they surface bounce, intercept, and destroy the target. And then high-power microwave, if you just emit very high-power microwave on the radar, and you counter that by shielding and EMP protection. The main destructive element are decoys. The problem are several with 80, these so-called ARMS, anti-radiation missiles seekers, that you have to re resolve and acquire the correct radar signal, and you can have the signals going all over the place because the signals have different parameters from time to time as they emit, and you, you want to obtain accurate angle data on the source, especially when you have multiple reflections from multipath. And electronic support measure equipment is usually used to acquire and ID the target. 
Uh, that is, you know ahead of time because you've listened that certain piece of equipment, certain radars transmitted certain frequencies. So that's how that can be used to acquire. And track can be maintained by angle gating the signals from with a broadband receiver that accepts signals from a wide range of frequencies, but a narrow angle of it focuses on. And multipath issue is crucial to arm operation and you want to reject multipath, the arm receiver typically uses a leading edge de uh, tracker. So it just tracks the front portion of each pulse so it won't see the multipath, which would come later time. And, it, and it, it, this is good for high elevation angle target approaches of arms because you won't have uh, multipath then. Okay, now we're going to go on to, uh, to countermeasures, how we get around the electronic countermeasures. They're called ele electronic counter countermeasures or ECCM. And there are a number of these and we've alluded to them when we talked about ECM. There's masking, hiding of the target. We can do this passively and actively. Then we can deceive the target and destruction. Now how do we counter all these different things? Um, for passive masking, which is chiefly chaff, uh, co co constant false alarm thresholding uh, of, of should be very resistant to jamming signals. And since the, we have the digital, digital revolution, we can have CFARs that are, act on just a given range azimuth cell, because just because you've got a lot of uh, very high signal coming down the main beam, it's not going to raise the threshold for the whole radar coverage. This fa constant false alarm rate thresholds that can be made with millions of cells that you you uh, see fire over each and every scan of the radar or very quickly uh, so you get a rapid change in the noise level but the jamming level so the C fire algorithms are developed to be you want if you want them to be re so that they're re resistant to the jamming signals now ECM against chaff how do we handle that uh, now that, again, the digital revolution came, the chaff uh, I showed you in the previous uh, talks, the first talk, uh, that chaff cloud, uh, when viewed with a, I mentioned, with a pulse Doppler filtering banks of a low PRF radar, it, it, it just, you didn't see the chaff at all. As a matter of fact, when it was, the chaff was being sewed uh, out of the plane that dropped it, the pulse Doppler radar detected the target dropping the chaff sower dropping the chaff but not the chaff itself because the chaff is diffuse windblown clutter and it's rejected by the Doppler filtering process uh, like we described in the signal processing uh, lecture on pulse Doppler radars because you know chaff is just rain that's more intense and the wind shear can be greater than rain but still, if you design your radar with good Doppler filtering, chaff shouldn't be a problem for low PRF radars. ECCM against chaff clouds requires a waveform which has a blind speed greater than a uh, 100 meters a second because chaff's going to have velocities clearly lower than that. It forces the microwave radar to operate at medium or high PRFs. Uh, so that you can separate the targets from the chaff or use a CW mode. And at lower frequencies, a UHF, for instance, we can use staggered PRFs with unambiguous range detection. But that'll have propagation limitations. Now let's move on to active techniques to count electronic countermeasures. Uh, first, uh, we've got the affected radiated power. We want to dilute that. And the way we do that, as I mentioned before, uh, in going over the different examples, is we force the jammer to spread its bandwidth. Or if we have a direct spot jammer, it'll go to the wrong frequency when we're, when we're moving back and forth, spreading, you know, hopping from one frequency to another. And so when we do that hopping from one frequency to do another, in order to jam, the jammer has to go broadband or it won't be jamming the radar signal. Now we're going to talk about the different methods, side load jamming and main load jamming.
Now here are the different methods, uh, frequency and agility and diversity. Uh, I talked about that. We can go frequency of earth, uh, from pulse bursts to pulse bursts. Agility may be sufficient. And we can use parallel frequencies and diverse channels. Uh, wideband transmissions will force the jammer to a uh, barrage mode. And polarization techniques can be used since most jammers generate circular polarization because they don't know if the radar is linear or uh, how it's transmitting and receiving, uh, you can have the, the system receive on one of the two orthogonal channels and that can help. And then we can uh, send off deceptive transmissions, small off-frequency transmissions out of band, which uh, really aren't the radar signal, but can help force the radar jammer to go more broadband than the radar actually is. And now side lobe techniques. For side lobe jamming, just the best way is low and as ultra low side lobe techniques as you can get on the main antenna, particularly if you're using, uh, say, slotted arrays or no matter uh, non-phased arrays, you want to go with the lowest side lobes you can get. We saw that in examples when we went to ultra low side lobes down 50 dB of that level. It's very hard to, for barrage jamming to be effective and on ground based sites ground reflections can control the achievable side lobes but that's a limit but it really helps you. It helps you by 50 dB over say 20 dB. You get a 30 dB difference. And coherent side lobe jammers, what these are, are auxiliary antennas and receivers that are right near the radar, and they generate an adaptive signal which cancels the jamming that's entering the receiver. And this increases the side lobes at the other angles. Next we have coherent side lobe cancelers. Uh, they cancel the jamming signal as it enters the receiver, so they just cancel the receiver. Third, we have fully adaptive antennas, which permit both low side lobes and side lobe cancellation. Now, uh, what that means is you have, with the radar, an auxiliary channel that just looks around and looks for a strobe from where a jammer is. It looks at that angle. And these are used with phased array radars. And then once you know the angle of the jammer or jammers, then you, uh, in the phased array, do a calculation uh, very similar to calculating ad adaptive uh, Doppler filter weights. In fact, the formalism is identical. And what you say is you want to maximize the, the gain in the main beam. And you say, what are the weights that will, the weights on each of the elements of the array that will maximize the um, gain in the, in the main beam of the phased array where it's pointing and what that will, t those weights that come out will put a null where the jammers are. And so that works very, very well. And so you get both low side lobes and, and side lobe cancellation at the main place. And this requires at least one antenna channel uh, independent of the main one a lot of times there'll be uh, a fully adaptive array, the whole uh, phased array, the whole array will, will be, uh, the weights will be adaptable so many different jammers can be canceled and put nulls put in those places. And that's what we note here, but it's a significant expense to implement uh, fully adaptive arrays. Okay, next look, let's look at deception. Uh, the ECCM techniques against deception, well, uh, first is passive deception, fat, passive deception, and we have adequate numbers of, of detection and tracking channels so that you can process the false, a lot, false targets that you're getting from the jammer. So that's one thing you have to do. You have to have plenty of room in your track and your detection buffers. And then, and uh, a second thing,
as you can as you process the data you want to look at the attributes of the target signal because the target signal just won't be one range azimuth Doppler so it'll be a bunch of them together I mean range azimuth and Doppler and you uh, high resolution range high range resolution techniques are one thing that can be used you can look at the Doppler spectra of the target and which would be characteristic of that target and not of a jammer and multiple frequency analysis of the what you see as the return from the target and and to, and look at the trajectory analysis and these things would be different from the JAMA than from the, a real target then we can have active deception techniques uh, ultra low side lobe antennas we've all gone over these things and now to destruction now the, the main d destructive entity that's used against uh, we mentioned against uh, radars are, are arms so we can destroy the destructive arms with a SAM or an anti-air missile just take them out and just other destructive techniques low probability of intercept radars which are usually coded modulated or CW impulse waveforms. You can use active decoys where uh, near the radar you have a couple of emitters a hundred yards away so when the arm comes in it can get confused as to which is the radar and which is the arm and it will and you can have these multiple decoys blink on and off to confuse the active decoys. You can also have bi-static jamming where you bounce a signal of the radar off the main lobe, off of uh, the terrain, and that can create effective multiple decoys. Now, in summary, uh, electronically active and passive techniques we have been described, and we can potentially degrade the performance of microwave radar systems and mitigate that degradation. We've looked at passive techniques, chaff decoys, active techniques such as jammers, and the different types of noise jamming techniques, standoff, escort, and screen uh, self-screening jammers, and also the spot versus barrage jamming, one way you're dealing with location and the other bandwidth, and then also repeated jammer techniques. And these techniques, as I said, have been developed which mitigate uh, the, the ECM. And so that's a summary of uh, the end of the lecture. But first of all, I'd like to uh, note these references. Uh, I'd, first of all, I'd like to really thank Dave Barton for his the lecture notes that he presented at Lincoln Laboratory in 1995, and I've uh, re-rendered and adapted some of a number of his block diagrams of how to do a dichotomy of uh, breaking down all the different techniques so they're less confusing. The details of the equations and things are all in the standard radar books. The moving target tech detect uh, in 1975 was uh, tested against DCM and chaff. And I thank Dave for his help and uh, by the use of that lecture. And lastly, I assigned a number of problems, very similar to the problems we went over and during the course of the lecture. And if you go over the, do these problems, uh, you can always turn back and see how we did the other problems. And um, and uh, by the way, if you find any problems in my mathematics, let me know so I can add them to the errata.